okay, Brian, what was what were you going to say? Uh, when I, I I had to stop to make the translation. I, I think one thing that is important, especially in a small business and a young business, is you need to hire. And and by hire, it doesn't always need to be a full time employee. It could be a contract employee. It could be something where you're using a freelancer. Uh, many ways to hire. But you need to hire experts, I... and you need to hire people smarter than you. And that's scary sometimes. But it is you must do it. You must trust yourself enough to hire people that are smarter than you in the areas that you need support. How to keep these these employees in your company? Uh, hmm. Because you have the process of hiring them. Você tem um processo de trazer para a empresa. But you also have to to take care of how to keep them in your business, to keep the best in your business. Hmm. And uh, Unfortunately, they haven't to fire the ones that you had made a mistake. How, how is this process? A pergunta que eu estou fazendo ao Brando é como não só como empregar, como contratar bons, mas como mantê-los e também no processo de lamentavelmente ter que encaminhar pessoas que não foram bem contratadas para outras para outros empreendimentos. I that's two very big questions. <laughs> In short. I hire a lot of young people um, because I open new schools and because of the economics, uh, the economics of a new school demands that I have some young teachers and I will need to invest in their growth. In hiring young teachers, I, I accept that most of them will leave within four to five years because Four to five years, de quatro a cinco anos. If I, if I keep them for four years, that's very successful. Because they came, they grew, and they grew out of the school. And they, they went to okay. a larger school, they found management opportunities, they found opportunities. Okay. Ele está falando o seguinte, que o processo para ele, ele considera de sucesso quando ele consegue que a pessoa fique pelo menos de quatro a cinco anos na empresa. É a expectativa que ele tem. E essa pessoa, pelo fato de ela ter sido bem escolhida, ela provavelmente deve se mudar para um empreendimento que seja ainda maior. Ou então, inclusive, até começar o seu próprio empreendimento. Is it what you said? Yeah, and it's, that's success for me. If they stay, and they grow, and they leave, but they leave happy and proud that they worked for me, that's a success. And, and many times they will send me a friend or a cousin or someone else to replace them. You told me that you've been, you have opened 11 big institutions so far. That's a huge number. Ele me yeah. falou que ele já abriu 11 empreendimentos educacionais até agora. Which one do you consider the best? Or do you always consider the best the last one? The one that you are now. Qual deles desses 11 você considerou melhor? Or você sempre considera o último como sendo melhor? They're very different and, and they are successful in different ways. I guess the project that I finished uh, three years ago, uh, we opened an American school in Prague uh, and in Brno, which is the second city of Czech Republic, and, the, and in Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia. And we opened three schools uh, in two years. And we found an investor and in uh, that short time we were able to sell the investment uh, to an investment company uh, which our plan was for that to be five years the 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 goal of the business plan was to do that process in five years and we did it in two it was crazy but it was very successful and the this i still obviously it's only three years ago so Students that entered the school are sending me messages saying thank you because they're going to university now. Uh, very positive experience. And it was a very short experience because of just economics and the opportunity was very good. Uh, but it was very successful. Você abriu três escolas num período de dois anos. O projeto era que essas escolas ficassem como sua propriedade, as your property, as 
part of your business for five years, por cinco anos. Uhum. Mas acabou que você encontrou um investidor de risco, venture, venture capital, pra, e comprou o seu, o seu negócio, uma, 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 provavelmente um grupo com bastante capital, que quando, quando eles fazem esse tipo de investimento é porque eles estão vendo que investir no seu empreendimento ia dar mais retorno que investir em mercado de ações. Então, é, eram lugar, questões lucrativas, não é isso? And sometimes you will have, in, in this sense, and when I talk schools, it's because that is my business. Any business could do the same. And some of them are looking at it as they want to do other businesses in the neighborhood or in the city where the school is. And the school could be the foundation for a real estate project. It could be a foundation for a shopping project. It could be a lot of different things uh, where uh, that, it, it, it could it be a small piece of something very large. It improves the value of the, of the area. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Então, o que o, que o Breno está falando é o seguinte, o um investidor de risco, venture capital, ele faz esse investimento não só pela questão do, do retorno financeiro com relação àquele negócio, mas provavelmente porque ele está agindo em toda a área em todo o bairro. Então, você tem uma escola, uma escola de qualidade, uma escola que vem sendo bem administrada, bem azeitada. Uh, business. Naquele... Any business. Vai valorizar ainda mais. I see. It's a, it's a very good strategy. I have never thought of it. Maybe because here in Brazil, we, we don't work, or at least I don't know, about uh, making investments in school in a way to valorize the, the whole business around. Ah, eu nunca vi aqui no Brasil você comprar de, 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 um, de um empreendimento. Investir em educação de forma que possa valorizar toda a região no entorno. Empreender, doing business. Uh, what advice would you give to the people that are listening to us about uh, this experience you have had? Probably you have had very happy experience, but you probably had some, uh, some bad ones. From the ones that we, you, you got good learning. Uh, provavelmente o Brandon, nessas 11 instituições que ele já abriu, mundo afora, ele teve muitas experiências de sucesso. Mas é nos fracassos que nós aprendemos. Quais são os conselhos que você pode nos passar, Brandon? Well, I'll go back to a question you asked before, to, as my answer. Uh, when you asked before about, about firing people, about ah. asking people to leave the, the company. Just a moment. Uh, na verdade, ele vai agora vai falar sobre o processo de demissão, ok? But on the, as the answer to your question about what I learned, <laughs> <laughs> I learned if if you know that you have hired the wrong person, you need to fire them today. It happens. It happens. Yeah. And and you need to fire them today. It hurts. It will make the other people in the company angry. But it will make them angry this week because they know, they know too, that that employee is bad. And if you keep him, the cancer will spread. It will hurt your business for a very long time. And you might need to fire five, six, seven people because you didn't act when you knew you should. Well, that's the words we have. It's like a disease that you have mm -hmm. to fight as soon as it starts. É como se fosse uma doença que você precisa combater tão logo inicie, né? Você tá com um funcionário que não está, que ali não é um ambiente para ele, não porque ele a empresa seja melhor do que ele, mas as I have list, I, I have read in a book by a, a very a very a very successful CEO from General Electric, he said that he had no problem about firing employees because he was Them, giving them a new opportunity in, in a place that they could be successful. Então, a, a questão de demitir ela é muito importante, porque ela pode doer uma semana, o grupo provavelmente vai ficar chateado. Poxa, demitir o, o João, aquela coisa toda. Mas na semana seguinte, que vão ver, eles já sabem, um cara podia ser, a pessoa podia ser uma pessoa maravilhosa, mas não era mais uma pessoa e era para estar naquele empreendimento. Provavelmente ia se espalhar como uma doença. So, back to the 11 companies that you have opened in Saudi Arabia, uh, in Bahrain, not Saudi Arabia, but in Bahrain, in Qatar, in the Czech Republic. 
any any more countries that you have open business? Ah, let's see, Slovakia, uh, Slovakia. Kuwait, Dubai, wow, Abu Dhabi. Very good. This very uh, very different places. Very different environments. Very. Uh, so, very. what else can you tell us about this experience about opening so many business, eleven in all? I think the experience for me is always. It's. I, I love the energy of it. I, I love the prospects. What can be, and uh, I have been fortunate that each time I have opened a school. Uh, generally, they are very different styles. So in the Middle East, uh, we were doing a pure American instruction, very pure. Uh, in Europe, we did project-based learning. So each time for me to do a new project, I get excited again. And I think okay. for the people that I will work with in this plan, in, in, in these courses, the people I work with, I want them to see this as you don't need to open one business and do it until you retire. You can have ah, okay. multiple successful businesses. O que ele está falando é que esse processo de abertura de empresas é uma coisa muito interessante. Então, quando ele estava no Kuwait, no Bahrein, no Catar, a maneira como ele trabalhava era uma. Era uma coisa mais básica, mais elementar. Indo para a Europa já, já demandava outros tipos de projetos, ainda que fosse na área educacional. Era mais projetos baseados em aprendizado, projetos baseados em problema. E o que about uh, this process, people, uh, employees, uh, culturally speaking, are they, are they very different from what you found in the, uh, in the Arabian world to what you have seen in, the, in Europe? And what you remember back in the United States, uh, how can you compare these, all these groups, even from Brazil that you had had a, an experience in Brazil? Very different. I, I think employees are more different than students. Uh, the employees change because of culture. They change because of the labor laws. Uh, they change because of religion. Uh, they they change because of politics in, in the middle in uh, Czech Republic. They were communist, you know, 30 years ago. It's not that long. So you still have the feelings and the behaviors uh, that they learned uh, or that their parents learned and passed on. Uh, each culture is different. I think having lived in Teresina, I think it would be like if you went from Teresina to Joinville, the people will be different and the way they will react to a boss and the way they will uh, work, the way they want to have lunch, it's different. And as a boss, you have to change. Ele está dizendo que assim como acontece no Brasil, de você ver diferença nas pessoas, nos alunos, nos profissionais, se você sair de Teresina até Porto Alegre, provavelmente você vai... Ele, ele também encontrou essas várias... Essas, essas, essas várias mudanças nos diversos países onde ele já passou. Estados Unidos, Brasil, ele morou em Teresina, Bahrein, Kuwait, República Tcheca, na Eslováquia. Which one was the most different to you that you have lived in the United States and in Brazil? Qual foi a, mais, a diferença mais marcante para você que você percebeu para quem tinha morado no Brasil, para quem tinha morado nos Estados Unidos? For sure, Brazil, but it was because it was first. And, and there was so much different. And then after Brazil, I, I went to, to the Middle East. And there were things that were different, but they were like Brazil. And they were different, but they were like America. So as you travel, you start to see, okay, it's different, but I recognize 60% of it. And I understand oh, how to work with it. Humans are humans everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody okay. has a wife and a mother. <laughs> <laughs> então, como ele estava dizendo aqui, que o maior impacto para ele realmente foi quando ele veio do Brasil, dos Estados Unidos para o Brasil. Então, quando ele foi para o meio oeste, quando ele foi para o mundo árabe e depois para a Europa, boa, boa parte dos comportamentos ele encontrava já referência no Brasil ou nos Estados Unidos. É, isso aqui eu já passei. 60% do Brasil. É, isso aqui eu já passei. 
60%, 70% eu já vejo nos Estados Unidos. Ou seja, ser humano é ser humano em qualquer parte do mundo. Do mundo. Todo mundo tem pai, tem mãe, filho. Ok, very good.